Anyway, my dear ones, here we are on the first, the very first Sunday of April already. And who knew that very many months ago, when folk were deciding on the topics for us all to um, view and ponder throughout the year, that the topic for April would be bright beginnings, bright beginnings. And uh, straight away when I looked at that, I thought, well, that's very fascinating because this week uh, the Christian world moves into the Easter week. And within that is the Jewish to the celebration of Passover. And for me, as soon as I heard bright beginnings, I straight away went to light. Light came to me. It's all about light. And uh, bright beginnings in these times are, you know, they may be a stretch for some of us, but we were capable of stretching. I know that. And um, so I looked at this thing called light, and I thought, well, maybe the invitation for us all this week is to be the light more energetically and more consciously wherever we are, whether we're at home or with whomever we are, wherever we are, just be the light. You see, and just be the light sounds simple, but as you know and I know, in these days especially, it's very challenging to be that as we endeavor to render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and we're being bombarded with all the ways to go about that, and how to be, and how to take uh, due diligence, and how to be cautious, and, and what to do for our minds, bodies, hearts, and souls. And we're paying attention. But now, in this moment, we get to render to God the things that are God's, because there is that aspect of us that we must not forget. We just must not forget that. And Easter is all about um, radiance and, and rising up into lightness of being, coming out of the darkness of sorrow and sadness and suffering and rising up into light. So what I see as for all of us in this week now is to ponder not only the goings on of every day, not only the things we have to do and where we have to be or not be and so on, but to ponder the other side of our lives. And that would be the essential essence of ourselves, the empowered part of ourselves, um, that which enables us all to move through everything and anything, every kind of condition, every kind of situation, every kind of circumstance um, with with grace, with grace, uh, and with strength, and with faith. But what is it that usually stops us and blocks us from this? Well, it's the same old, same old that we're all familiar with. It's fear and doubt and, you know, anxiety. They are light blockers. They are energy usurpers. And you and I are endeavoring all through our lives to be able to handle them and to handle them well. And if ever there was a time to learn that, it's probably now. And we're all in this learning process together. It, it, it's, it's also a curve. And so what we have to be aware of, I believe anyway, is that as human beings wearing a human body in three-dimensional planet Earth, we will be visited by these energies all the time. But it's how to handle them is the question and whether or not we can meet them and greet them, as we ought to honor them, meet them, they're there, they're, they're our visitations, and recognize them. But to do that in a way that's not resisting, but in a way that's not welcoming either, but just in a way that's poised, that's poised, so that those energies don't remain with us and don't stay with us. We recognize them for what they are, and we bless them on their way. But how are we going to do that? That is the question. Well, I believe that you and I are not going to be able to handle our sorrows and sadness and all our uh, worries and woes and our doubts and our fears if we're not consciously connected to the empowerment that is ours to that inner presence that is in us all, to that light that forever shines brightly within us all. 
That's what we have to do. And as I was preparing last night, I was reminded of a story that I'd heard some time ago about a group of intimate friends gathering together and they were sharing. And one of the friends told a story. And it was a story about a man who went into the woods and found an eagle's egg. And so finding it, he couldn't find a nest or anything else. He brought it back and he put it in the hen house in a nest of one of the, um, the, the, the hens. And eventually, of course, all those eggs were hatched. And out came the eagle with the rest of the little chicks. And that eagle thought he was the same as the rest of the little chicks. So he learned, as they all did, to scratch for worms and to cackle and to do what chickens do. And um, as time went on, he became a, a very good specimen of a chicken, that's for sure. A little bit bigger than the rest, that's true too. And he learned to fly a few feet in, in the air, you know, and do all of that. And then when he was a very old, he was a very old chick, very old chicken, and he looked up into the sky and he saw this amazing, incredible, beautiful movement of another bird in the air floating almost without flapping a wing on the wind currents. And he looked to his neighbor and he says, well, what is that? Well, he says, that's the eagle, the king of the sky. The eagle is heaven bound, air bound, sky bound, and we are earth bound. And he just gazed at this beautiful scene for a time, and then with a sigh got on with his, you know, scratching for worms and so on. And then, of course, eventually, he died as a chicken, never knowing that he was this golden eagle that could have flown through the skies as the one he saw. And then the person telling the story looked at one of his friends and he says, that eagle, he says, reminds me of you. And the friend got all offended, thinking he was a chicken and not able to do this, that, and the other, N missing the whole point of the story. What he was saying to his friend was, you are a beautiful golden eagle, and unlike the eagle chick, you have a choice. You can choose to fly free. You can choose to don your greatness. You can choose to be all that you can be. And you see, that was the other side of the story. But where did his friend go to? I'm less than, I'm not enough. I'm just like a chicken. And that's the way you and I are inclined to interpret these kinds of things when they visit us. Instead of going behind the story to see the true meaning of it, the moral, so to speak, of the story. So as I see it, for you and for me to be the light beings that we're created to be, remember, each one of us comes, in the beginning was the light, and out of the light, every single thing came into being. You came into being and I came into being out of the light, as light, to be light. And for that to happen, you and I have to stop denying, denying the true essence of our being and stop resisting it because to, to recognize the light, you and I cannot be the light until we first recognize it. And to recognize it, we have to pay attention, we have to listen, we have to be quiet, we have to develop a deep relationship with ourselves. We have to know what it is that we think, we have to know what it is that we feel, we have to know what it is why we do what we do. So that requires self-contemplation. And as the great ones all say, the examined life is far superior to the unexamined life. And we need to do a little bit more examining, and part of the good of this situation we find ourselves in is that we have the time to do that. We have the time to do that. 
those of us who are not um, in the workplace still. And even if we are, we need to find the time to do that so that we can connect with the empowerment of ourselves and be the great influencers that we are here to be, that we signed up for. We're here to make a difference. You and I signed up to come on board and come into this life at this time to serve. We're all here to serve, to serve, to make the difference and to expand the light and to increase empowerment in all of life and to lift up all of life. It's not going to happen if we're not doing that first with ourselves. So whatever that looks like now, that would be the place to begin. And some of us may be feeling very shaky, very unsure, um, very much um, on the anxious side of life, and it's very understandable. And it's a true experience. But then, if we just could quieten ourselves enough to get in touch with the strength of ourselves, with the inner light of ourselves, with the power of ourselves, we'd be amazed at how we can overcome, because each one of us is made to triumph and to overcome. It is within us, it's in our nature, it's in our spiritual DNA to do this. So we have to ask ourselves, well, what's stopping me and what's blocking me and what's keeping me in fear and what's keeping me in doubt? What is that? And is there any foundation to it? Is there? Now, I'm not saying this is easy, for it is not. But you know what they say, feel the fear and do it anyway. Feel the fear and do it anyway. That's what many of us are doing at this time. We're acknowledging anything that crops up within us, and then we're making a decision around it. That young man in that group had a decision to make. Was he going to stay at his level of limitation, or would he allow himself to touch that greatness within himself that could cause him to rise up out of that limited situation? And you and I are faced with this every day. Am I going to wake up today and live a limited day, an anxious day, or will I decide to be otherwise? Will I desire to trust myself a little more, the great self within me? Am I ready? Do I have the courage? Am I brave enough to move into that light? And in it, it may be scary in the beginning, but to keep moving, to keep going, to keep being in it, and to keep knowing that that is part of your essential being and it can guide you, you. Because remember, no one is able to do this for us. We may have the most wonderful partners in life. We may have the most wonderful friends in our lives, very caring and very attentive to our needs. But they're not going to be the ones to do for us what we must do for ourselves. And sometimes, the fact that we have these people in our lives stop us from doing our own work. That's the other side of that. That can stop us from doing for ourselves what we could do for ourselves. So be the great person you are. Deny the nothingness that you may have picked up along the way of life. Deny the dust that you may have been told you were and back into the dust you were going to go. You're not dust, you're a jewel. You're a jewel. You are available to enter into the kingdom of all good, which is the kingdom of consciousness. And the best tool you have working for you is your consciousness. Your con I didn't say conscience. I said consciousness, that beautiful thing that you can think into your thought being your friend, 
if you make it a friend. You can sink into that consciousness that you are any great good thing that you desire to realize in your life and you can realize it. Yes, it is true, there is that power for good in the universe that is greater than you and that is greater than me and we can use that as it uses us for good and for very good. So again, I'm going to invite us all to start trusting more ourselves, trusting the light within ourselves the empowerment within ourselves, the presence within ourselves. And insource things before you outsource anything. Insource it, take it to the source. Take it to the source and let the source do the work for you. And if we learn to do this, our lives will be full of grace and ease. Our life will be a glorious experience and we will be present to it and we will be awake in it and then it doesn't matter what crosses my path, I am equal to handling it and moving through it and coming out of it the better for having gone through it. But don't take anyone's word for this. You have to test it out. Test it out and see. See for yourself how being in conscious connection with your source can raise your life, can raise your life, can fortify your life, can enliven your life, can cause your life to be a life of wonder and awe. And if our lives are not full of wonder and awe, we are not living as we could be living and we will never understand the beauty and the grace of what it is to be alive and to be present to all of creation in the way that spirit is, because there's God in everything, 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 and in every one. And if we as children had been recognized for the godliness that was within us, Perhaps we wouldn't be having to do any work on ourselves today. To recognize the God in a child is to bless that child into knowing who the child is and to enable that child to grow up strong and together and equal to an amazing, wonderful, productive life. So we can begin where we are and see everybody and meet everybody in this way. But we cannot do that until we first meet and greet ourselves in this way. So the choice is always yours, it's always mine. Will I rise up now and embrace the light that is mine to embrace? Will I rise up now and return to that great state of grace and light, return to my true home within the heart essence of my being, the home of the Father. Will I stand up and remind myself of what has been given to me to know that now am I a child of God, now am I a child of light, now am I the tabernacle of the Most High. I mean, we can hear this until we're blue in the face and it might never even touch us. But if it does, then change is inevitable. Transformation is inevitable. And the rising up is assured. So what is it going to be? Will I stay in my hazy sleep, half awake, and stay with all that that brings to me, all the challenges it brings to me? Or am I ready, ready to awaken? awaken, awaken, and become alive to my living, to be in my life consciously and alive to its living. That's the best thing I could do for anyone. That's the best thing I could do for the world because the more alive I am to my living, the more energetic I am and the higher my conscious vibe is, and that goes out into all of creation and raises it all up, you see. There's more for you and for me to be than to do. We're all good at doing, and sometimes we get lost in the doing, 
But what there is for you and for me to be is awesome, awesome. Be in the awareness that I'm not so small after all. I'm not this limited, lacking little thing, the speck in the universe. I am so much more. I came out of a, the divine idea of the creator itself so that the creator itself could express itself through me. And so did you. Now, as I often say, what kind of a good time are we giving to our creator by means of each one of us? Is it a good time? I would like to think so. So let's be more on the bright side of life now as we go into this week and celebrate the bright side of life. We really can do that, you know, because it's given to you. You have the power. You are empowered. So I say go and empower because you are a point of light through which the light, the presence of spirit shines through in all of its fullness and wholeness, completeness and radiant magnificence. That's what you are, that point of light within the light itself, pulsating, 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 connected to all of the other pulses, pulsating, pulsating, pulsating. And if you and I are in unison with ourselves, with the one and with all else, then we will create a new world. We will transform this world, and we will come into the experience of a planet of serenity as it was meant to be, as we follow the vision and mission to honor presence, to nurture spirit, to enrich the life of all we serve through creating a beautiful, compassionate, love-filled world, peaceful world that works for everyone. That's our job. That's how amazingly important we are. So if it's going to be, it's up to you and it's up to me and no one else. It's mine to do and be as it is yours to do and to be. The question is, will we dare to be who and what we are? Let's ponder that this week. And in the meantime, know you're all wrapped up in our prayerful thoughts in our community. Thank you for tuning in and thank you for watching us. It has been a joy to be here with you today.